She was dubbed the first lady of song and Ella Fitzgerald became one of the most important jazz singers of all time. The winner of 13 Grammys, she had a voice that could go from sultry ballads to sweet, sweet jazz. And her seven decade long career and musical legacy surpasses Sinatra, Presley and Jackson. Take a look. a fabulous new book and a definitive novel about Ella Fitzgerald and he joins us now from LA. Welcome to Studio 10, Jeffrey. Thanks so much for joining us. Yay. Yay. Oh. Yay for Ella. Yeah, yay for Ella indeed. She is such an extraordinary, had such an extraordinary voice. But I was reading she had an incredibly tough upbringing. Tell us about that. Yeah, tough I think is an understatement. She never met her father. Her mother's Portuguese lover took them from Newport News, Virginia, up to Yonkers, New York. And then, unfortunately, her mother died when she was in her early teens. Her stepfather abused her. Mm -hmm. And Ella became, literally, a woman of the streets. Uh, as they said back then, she was a good girl leading a bad life. Ooh. And despite all of that, Look what happened to her. That's a Look what she did with her talent. She's an inspiration to everybody everywhere, and she loved playing Australia. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I was I was actually in the moment of Alec gone yeah, back to. Yeah, that's all I can think about. She had an incredible work ethic. I mean, how, when you say a work ethic, how hard did she really work? Well, you tell me how tough you think this is touring the entire world about 42 to 44 weeks a year, two shows a night, six days a week, recording two or three albums a year, appearing on television in every major city in the entire world and making movies and doing shows like yours. She was hardly home. The woman worked constantly. Wow. You know, to become the first lady of song, she worked really hard for it. Mm. She was the most extraordinary person, Jeffrey. And as you alluded to before, you couldn't be black in America when she was growing up without having a hard life. And she had to smash through so many barriers. Um, and not only because of that, but also uh, because she had to uh, do other things. Tell us what are the things she had to, to fight for. She had to fight sexism as well as racism. Oh, yes. When I hear people talk about her be being an African-American woman, I say, no, no, you must stop and separate those two things out because she fought being African-American, but she also fought for being a woman because she was a woman in a completely male-dominated industry, and yet she didn't fall to drugs, she didn't fall to feminine wiles. She used her talent and her incredible drive to get ahead, and she kicked down doors for everybody. There is not a female singer alive today, or especially anyone in entertainment who's African American or of any color, who didn't have their path paved first by Ella Fitzgerald. And she did it without taking any bows for it. She didn't write books claiming what she did. She did what she did. She did it stalwartly, but she did it quietly, because she was a very shy woman privately. But she did it. And her legacy lives on with all the music available and with the Ella Fitzgerald Charitable Foundation, which takes her money and brings it forward into the 21st century, helping the working poor everywhere. Mm. Now, I'm interested to hear that she owed a debt to Marilyn Monroe. Why is this? Actually, she owes two debts, and they're, they're similar but very intriguing stories. And that's a wonderful picture to use for it. Ella wanted to play in a major nightclub in Los Angeles. I won't mention the name, I don't want to embarrass them, but the story's in the book. And they didn't want her. They didn't want to risk an African-American woman being their headliner. So Marilyn Monroe, who adored Ella, and listened to Ella to calm down from the tragedies of her life, mm. said, I'll do this for you. If you book Ella Fitzgerald, I will come in 
all 10 nights of her engagement oh, wow. and bring in a party of 10 big stars and we will spend hundreds of dollars a night and our celebrity will bring in everybody else from town and she showed up every night Ella was there oh, and Ella never had a problem a getting booked again yeah, now a few months wow. later, Ella was in Denver, and anywhere yes. Marilyn was, where Ella was performing, Marilyn was there. Oh, hell And they wonderful. were doing some publicity. They were doing publicity for this place in Denver, and they were showing Ella the back door. And Marilyn said, Ella, no, 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 no. You're the star here. The press is here for you. And she turned to the press and said, Ella Fitzgerald and I walk in the front door or neither one of us walks in at all. Good girl. And there are photos of them walking in together, and never again did Ella Fitzgerald have to go through a back door to get in anywhere. Marilyn was much more upfront about her stardom than Ella was. But Ella learned from Marilyn, don't let people step on you. You are a star. Demand your due. And that made a change in Ella's life. Her life got better after that because of Marilyn's good counsel and her good friendship. Sisterhood. Right. Yes, it's wonderful. Um, Ella toured Australia. We have some vision of that at the moment. Um, she loved Australia, you said? A lot. She loved being down there. And in fact, I believe the video you're showing is from a BP special she did in Australia. And uh, there is a, a funny ending to this special because she didn't realize the cameras were on her all the time. She thought they were only getting certain songs. So she thought that the show was over. And she starts talking to the audience and then someone signals her, Ellie, you're still on. She goes, I'm still on? Well, Australia, you've seen something new because it was live television back then. And, uh, but she did it so charmingly, nobody cared. And she threw yeah. in an extra song after that to make up for it. Oh, well, Jeffrey's book is a must for everyone. Oh, it is yes. absolutely fabulous. Just, of course, not for music lovers. There it is. It's called Ella, and it's by Jeffrey Mark. Thank you so much for joining yes, us this morning, wonderful. Jeffrey. Much appreciated. <laughs> It is a pleasure to reach out to my friends down there. Oh, and that uh, book is available at all good bookstores and online through Amazon. And uh, Ella's voice continues to live on, it is, doesn't it? I can't wait to read that. It is a gift from God. It, Isn't it? That's scatting she does. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Incredibly talented. Well, up